morning and uh, welcome. I'm very glad that so many of you uh, can be here today. The nominations for the role of the leader of the Scottish National Party close at 12 p.m. And yesterday I'm pleased to say that the three main candidates received formal confirmation that they passed the nomination threshold. So today is the first official day of campaigning. The job of SNP leader is bigger than that of any other party. It spans the role of First Minister, leader of the Scottish National Party, and leader of the Yes Movement. The movement towards Scotland becoming an independent country depends on good governance, reaching out to wider civil society, and enthusing and working with the wider Yes Movement, including Yesers in other parties, and in none. I've been impressed by what Ash has said on these issues, and about having a more outward-facing style of government. Ash is showing us that we work best together when we work respectfully together. Leaders build teams, and I'm very confident that in Ash Regan we will have someone who can build a bigger team. A team that incorporates the many people inside and outside of government, in the SNP and elsewhere, who want to work together to take Scotland forward. I'm very pleased to give her my support in that goal, and I encourage fellow Scottish National Party members to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ash Regan. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's very nice to see such a good turnout here this morning. Um, thank you for um, joining me at this incredible venue for the launch of my campaign to be the next leader of the Scottish National Party. I'm humbled by the support that I've received from many SNP members who have nominated me to stand for the leadership of our party and I'm ready to take on this challenge and lead our party forward towards a brighter future. But I want to be really clear at the outset that this is not just about me. This is about all of us and this is about our shared commitment to building a better Scotland. So I want to take a moment to thank my SNP colleagues um, in Holyrood, in Westminster, and in our councils up and down the country, and to those who will be endorsing me publicly in the coming days and weeks, I say thank you. And to those who have already made commitments to other candidates, I want you to know that I will work with you, and I will support you as leader of our great party. Our campaign is built on hope, optimism, and a belief in the power of our people. The truth is that our movement has been divided for far too long by petty differences and personal agendas. But we can't afford to let these differences tear us apart any longer and we must come together as one united force for Scotland because the challenges facing our country are too great for us to face them if we are divided. If parties stand on a mandate to begin independence negotiations and achieve a majority of the votes cast, then they are entitled to pursue it. All unionist politicians used to accept this. And it's only now they whine because they fear losing. This morning, I have sent a letter to all the independence groups notifying them of my intention to establish an independence convention on day one of my leadership. I will unite the movement and ready our country for independence. But we have much work to do. And today I can announce that under my leadership we will not be challenging the Section 35 order in the Supreme Court. Uh, the GRR bill is flawed. It doesn't command public support. And this has been evidenced by the public outrage over women being endangered in our prison estate by rapists seeking to gain the system. Challenging in the courts will prolong the debate in terms that are, I believe, dividing society, which I think is to the detriment 
of transgender people. And I don't think the public will forgive us as a party for using taxpayers' money for something that they are so clearly opposed to. Instead, I'm going to seek a consensus. But I will say clearly here that there can be no compromise on women's rights. I'm going to seek thank you. I will be seeking consensus and not compromise. And in the absence of consensus, if there was an appetite in the country for it, then I would be happy to hand the matter over to a citizen's assembly for them and let the people of Scotland decide how to take it forward. I am the candidate for change, not continuity. I want to restore the mission which allowed the SNP to replace Labour as the dominant party of Scotland. That is independence for Scotland and good governance. I respect everything that my predecessors have achieved since 2007, but recently we have lost our way. And under my leadership, we will re-establish our track record. We will reform our team. We will reiterate the vision of an independent country with parity of esteem in the world. And the vehicle for this is the Independence Convention, which I've committed to establishing. And I want the membership of the SNP to be left in no doubt. For me, independence is the immediate priority. During my first 100 days as First Minister, the government will concentrate on running the country wisely, fairly and competently. And in tandem, we will make the case for independence by reconvening and emboldening the Council of Economic Advisers, amongst other bodies, bringing the best minds in Scotland and out with Scotland to help ready Scotland for independence. And we must move on now from the Growth Commission as too much has changed. The, the referendum mechanism has been exhausted, including the so-called de facto uh, referendum proposal. So under my leadership, SNP policy will be to explicitly declare on line one of our party manifesto in any election going forward that should we in conjunction or not with other parties, achieve a majority of seats and votes cast, then collectively we will begin independent negotiations on day one of a new parliament. So this is the voter empowerment mechanism, and it is designed to let the people of Scotland decide when they are ready. I will hand back independence back to the people where it belongs. I am the competent government candidate and the key to success is collegiate government governance where people of ability are appointed to key positions and then allowed the freedom to flourish in their portfolios. And an SNP government must be open to advice and help from all of Scotland in running the country wisely. And I'll not shun any section of our party, far from it. All colleagues and members will be encouraged to speak up, to speak loudly, and that will be balanced by a commitment that they listen earnestly and quietly if they expect the same in return. A successful SNP can only be led from the left of centre in the mainstream of the Scottish political tradition. And I used to work for Commonweal, which is a leading left-wing think tank. But I recognise that all successful parties are coalitions, and all successful countries value enterprise as well as fairness. And the SNP has always been a broad church. And I will reaffirm that by healing the divisions that have emerged over the past few years. Everyone is going to make up and move on. 
there are these are the reasons why I'm standing for the SNP leadership. Um, this is why I'm asking for your vote to be the next leader of the Scottish National Party. We all know that Scotland has a bright future ahead of it, and we must recommit ourselves to making that future a reality. We believe in the independence of our country, and we are committed to achieving it in a way that is fair, inclusive, and just for all. But we also believe in human rights, in collegiate governance, and in creating a Scotland that is welcoming and open to all. We believe in the power of our communities, and we are committed to working with them to build a better future for ourselves and also our children. So I ask you for your vote, not just for me, but for Scotland. So let's come together, let's build a better future for our country, let us do it with hope, with optimism, and a belief in the power of our people. Thank you.